Howdy who all my stock market gamblers. Welcome today. I'm Tall Mike. I'm so glad you're here. Well, the stock market is struggling for which direction it wants to move. Now we had that bad week last week and this week we kind of rebounded a little bit. So it's kind of a tug of war between the bulls and the bears. Now on the S&P, it came down to its 20 day moving average, but the 20 day moving average held and they're pushing it back up. It will not surprise me if they push the S&P up to a new record high. Remember, it hasn't hit a new record. Now, the Dow Jones hit a new record. The Nasdaq hit a new record. But the S&P never got to a new record high. It's record 4818. Now, I do think that they'll probably push it up above that. But then they're going to do the rug pull. Look at the VIX is still down in the 12 range, right? The VIX is extremely low. And that's telling you that they're getting ready to pull the rug out. But maybe not just yet. Maybe they push that up to 4818. We'll see how that all plays out. Now, I was reading an article. You know, this is just fascinating stuff. It just cracks me up, right? Here's the headline. Americans are optimistic about inflation slowing down. Americans, optimistic, inflation is slowing down. Now, who are these Americans they're talking about, really? Who are they? Are you out there? If you are, leave me, leave me a comment if you're optimistic about inflation slowing down. I'm not that optimistic, and I do think by the end of this year, inflation's going to take off again. Now, consumer debt, consumer debt, it soared to new heights over the holiday season. It soared to new heights. Now, if the economy's doing so well, why did they need to go in debt so far during the holiday season? The buy it now, pay later programs, those are off to the races. They're at record highs. But here's the thing. Credit card delinquencies are at the highest level since 2012. All right. So the consumer, this is the other headline, the consumer's expect weaker wage increases, right? You're not expecting your wages to go up very much, but you're still feeling really good about your overall finances. Who writes these articles? I mean, it's incredible, right? This is just not my take. It's not what I'm seeing out there in the real world. Look at they talk about all this soft landing, soft landing. Janet Yellen's out there to celebrate. We did it. We did it. We got soft landing. There's no soft landing. This thing is so far from over, so far from over. That inflation is going to spike back up. The market's expecting six rate cuts. Fed's already admitting to doing three of them. This is not going to end well. But the fact that they're saying that Americans are optimistic about inflation slowing down, look at inflation numbers spiked up so rapidly that the average person now spends $6,000 more a year because of inflation. $6,000. That's a lot of money. I don't think your wages went up. Well, maybe some people's wages went up. The high rollers, right? You went from $250,000 to $280,000 a year. Yeah, but the average person, no. Their wages didn't go up by $6,000. And that's take-home wages after taxes. $6,000 more maybe yours did. Some people's did. Obviously, they think that a lot of people have this. But here's what they got to start tracking, right? They got to start tracking the bankruptcies, right? Bankruptcies are spiking up. Now, why are they spiking up if everything's so wonderful? If the economy's doing so great, why are we having all these bankruptcy problems? Why are we having this homeless problem? These are problems that are just headed to the moon. Moon Boy's got to get on these because they're going straight up. Debt's going straight up. Homelessness going straight up. It's it, it's really crazy out there. But now now let's get into the real estate end of things. Now this this is really fascinating to me. Okay, so real estate kind of frozen up the slow time of year and all. Not much going on. The affordability, man, that affordability is still things are not affordable out there. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Home buyers' confidence is way up. That's what the article says. If you're a home buyer, is your confidence way up? You see, you have what's called rate optimism. Rate optimism. You see, if you're a homeowner, you got rate envy. You know, I got in at 2.6. Well, I got in at 2.8. You know, maybe she only got in at 3.0. 
for. But there's raid envy out there with the homeowners. But now there's raid optimism with the home buyers. Because what? Rates went from 8% down to 7%. This brings the rate optimism out. Look at that. And the article goes on to say 30% of Americans think that mortgage rates are going to fall this year. And they're saying that's really positive news, right? Well, 30% think they're going to fall. 70% think they're going to stay the same or go up, right? That doesn't sound that positive to me. Now, maybe it is positive. I, I, I don't really know. But to me, that's not positive. To me, we still have this big unaffordability factor in the housing market. Now, anyways, there was this other article came out. This was just kind of another funny one. Anyways, the article said when starter homes become forever, homes. Now, a lot of people, a lot of you are going to die in your house. That's what you tell me. You got 2.8%. You're locked in with the golden handcuffs. So your starter home is really going to become your ending home because you're going to die in the property. You're not going to sell that home. You're locked in at 2.8%. And I find that funny, right? I find that funny. Now, there's a guy. Okay, he's in San Jose. Here he was mentioned in the article. We just go by first name Tim in San Jose, right? Okay, so anyway, he says that he's locked into his home unless something drastic happens. Now, he's hoping to win the lottery because he wants to upgrade. He wants to buy a bigger home. He has a newborn and his family's growing, so he wants to upgrade, but he needs something drastic to happen to push him into the bigger home, to get him to upgrade to a larger home that he can afford. He needs to win the lottery. Well, I do think something's going to drastic is going to happen to Tim. Now, I know uh, San Jose is the area I sell. We're already down. Let's call it 10, 15 percent from where Billy Bob got out at. But we're already dropping, right? But I think we're going to drop to where Tim's going to see something drastic happen. He's going to be down by 40 or 50 percent. He's going to be underwater, and that's going to be pretty drastic for Tim. I don't think Tim's going to like that that much. Now, a lot of people do have the same problem as Tim, right? You bought the starter home. You squeezed into it. Maybe it was you and just you and your wife, but now you got a child. Where do you put the child? Well, you get rid of one of the offices, right? Maybe you only have one office. Get rid of that office and you put the, the nursery in there, right? So you're good. You're good. What happens when the second child comes along? Well, there's nowhere to put them. So what do you do? Maybe you go out and you convert the garage. Well, that's a possibility because converting the garage, that's cheaper than adding on to the house. Square footage is kind of expensive to add on, especially in my area. I'm sure sure your area it's very reasonable to add on to a house and make the house larger as your family grows but a lot of these people are having this same type of problem and, and, and it, it cracks me up it cracks me up you see the realtors out there the realtors out there right now I mean I'm a, I'm a real estate broker so I can just laugh at them because this is what they teach us to say you know it's always a great time to buy that, that, that that's in real estate school we learned all that right it's a great time to buy but here's what they're doing now. Here's what they're teaching the agents to say. The realtors are telling that the buyers, the home buyers, they have to rethink their definition of what low interest rate is. You see, we've gone from 8% down to 7%. So now they're telling you that that's now the new low interest rate. And I tend to argue that, you know, it's really not that expensive, 7%, but that's not the problem. You see, when you got 7% there and, you know, I, I say inflation's still at 7%, you can't convince me it's down there at 3%, but that kind of wipes out and makes the interest rate at 0%. And I understand that that's, that's is really relatively low, right? I mean, that's not the problem. The problem is that realtors have to rethink what a low price of a house is. You see, these houses, they just shot up 40% in the last three years, right? I mean, so it's got to come back down and it will revert back to the mean. People get so upset when I say, say, but Mike, it can't happen here. There's just no inventory. That one just always cracks me up. But the realtors out there, they're trying, they're desperate, right? I mean, they can't pay their rent. They can't, uh, that's the rent on their office space. They can't pay their mortgage. They can't even pay their real estate dues. 
real estate dues just came due for me again. I pay, I don't know, a couple thousand, two, three thousand dollars a year in fees every year just to be a realtor in my area. It gives me access to the MLS, gives me access to the National Association of Realtors, which still has 1.5 million realtors in the National Association of Realtors. But that number is going down. Why is it going down? Well, the realtors don't have money to renew. They don't have money to pay their yearly dues. So the real estate agents are kind of in a desperate bind. And they're trying to get you to rethink these what a low rate is so you'll come and buy a house. They need transactions. I mean, uh, transactions are way down, right? Now, prices... Prices in my area only down about 10 or 15%. Now, I'm sure in your area, they're still going up. I mean, you got you got the moon boys in here. I mean, that's what you got living in your area. That's why your prices keep going up. They're going, going to the moon with the moon boys. Oh, we got that Bitcoin ETF. Oh, it might come out today, right? Okay. I mean, that'd be exciting. Get Bitcoin at a million dollars right away, right? All those ETFs. I think there's 10, 12 of them coming out. They're going to have to go buy the Bitcoin now. Now, are they really going to buy the Bitcoin? I don't think they are. I really don't. I don't think they're going to buy the Bitcoin. Do they have an ETF? Yeah, now that was a big controversy. Does Gray- Grayscale Bitcoin Trust really have the Bitcoin? Nobody knew. So it was selling at a 30, 40% discount. But what they're going to do, BlackRock, right? BlackRock, the one that they like to buy houses. They like to buy Bitcoin, apparently. They're the ones coming out with that big ETF. And what they're going to do is they're going to slam that price of Bitcoin down. And then they'll pick some up once it gets slammed. I don't know how far they're going to slam it down. Probably get up to 50000 before they do the rug pull. Probably do the rug pull the same time the rug pull gets pulled out on the stock market. Now, once again, this is just my take. I I know your moon boys going to the moon. We're going to a million on Bitcoin stock markets in a new bull market in my house. Mike never goes down, never goes down, only goes straight up. All right, well, that's possible, but what you got in is affordability problem, right? I mean, this is the lowest on level. It's the least affordable time. Now, I love real estate. Everybody goes, Mike doesn't like real estate. Mike's a hater. No, I'm not. I'm just saying it's going to be a better opportunity for you. Now, you can go out and buy right now. A lot of people got to buy. You know, they got the family expanding. They want to upgrade to the bigger one. I got some clients right now that's kind of interested in them when they buy one from me. I actually got I got mostly sellers right now. But when someone buys one from me, I make them sign that disclosure. This house can drop 50%. Don't sue the dumb realtor. That'd be me, you know. Realtors, if we could do something else, we'd go do it. You know, we'd make YouTube videos. YouTube videos are fun to make, so a lot of realtors have started doing them. They're fun to watch because these realtors, they're all like Dave Ramsey, you know. Prices can never go down. Barbara Cochran only going to go up from here. Hurry up and buy. Look, you can hurry up and buy, but there's going to be opportunities coming. And I really going, I think you're going to be shocked, shocked at how big the opportunity opportunities really are. I mean, a 40% drop. That's probably where you should start looking once that happens. That'd probably be a good time, right? Now, a lot of people think they're just going to bounce right back up. They think the government's going to jump in and they're going to lower rates back to zero. They're going to buy, maybe they buy another $3 trillion worth of mortgages. That's what they have on their balance sheet at the Fed. $3 trillion. Maybe they'll buy, you know, add another $3 trillion. $6 trillion. That'll get that mortgage rate back down, won't it? I mean, that's that's what they do. They suppress the rates. When they suppress the rates, it artificially increases the bubble size. The bubble in 2008, we didn't have, you know, that much suppression yet. We were only 10 trillion in debt. Now we're 34 trillion. There was 1 trillion on the total Fed balance sheet. Now we're at 8 or 9 trillion. So the suppression of rates creates this bubble and they suppress rates for 14 years at 0%. And it kind of looks to me like they want to suppress the rates again. And they're going to do that on the short end. I just don't think it's going to work this time. I think it's going to be like pushing on a string. Maybe they do three rate cuts, maybe six. But I think that's the short end of the curve. The long end, the 10-year, the 30-year, I think that's going to head up. It's going to reinvent invert the curve. We're in an inverted yield curve right now. And it's going to reinvert the curve where the long term pays more interest than the short term rates. So that's going to reinvent 
invert, I can't reinvent, I keep saying that, reinvert <laughs> the curve. And that's where the bad stuff starts to happen. That's where prices start to come down on your house. That's where the stock market starts to collapse. That's where Bitcoin, oh, I don't know, Bitcoin hasn't been around long enough to predict. I'm sure the moon boys would say we're going to a million ETFs coming out. Maybe today, maybe today it gets announced. We'll see how that all plays out. If you like this stuff, I'm Tom Mike. Give me the thumbs up. Why not? Get out there, everybody. Enjoy the day. I just want to thank everybody for just watching my videos. I mean, I'm totally blessed and honored that I get, you know, I, I get a couple thousand people watching. That's so cool. Get out there. Enjoy the day. Bye-bye now.